video 113 where we do the second part of the optimizing the data here we're going to deal with painted surfaces that are not flashes like in the previous video we did the flashes but let's take an example of data sets that you can get from customers that are also painted and you want to clean those up like if we zoom in here you see even when i put the skeleton view in these are like very very small lines if i look in the aperture list there's like almost a hundred thousand of them so not very optimal data if i need to add more space over here for example i would have a hard time selecting this um, or pumping this up and things like that it just doesn't make any sense to even deal with this kind of data it's also a very bad way of using gerber um, gerber has way better features than using painting so we are going to turn this into something that we can actually work with the way we're going to do that is tools editing contours contourization the only thing that I, that we care about at this particular moment is this contourize section here we have by default it may come up with the bitmap which is a rough contourization which we are not going to use i want to have the exact image the exact same image as what i have here as that is painted but in a contour version so i switch to exact and i say contourize and what that will do for us it will turn all of that painted mass into contours that are a lot easier to work with and manipulate Another example that I want to give is that, uh, in this case, the customer incorrectly used the Gerber to uh, do all painting. But even systems that are using contours are not always doing it very well. An example of that is, I'm going to add a job here, a layer, for a particular job. Let's do a total view. See, when we are in skeleton view, there is no painting. Yeah, there's no no small apertures are being used, but we are we still are dealing with a file that's not very optimal. If we look at the aperture list, we have a contour followed by another contour and another contour. Then there's a negative contour, and finally there's more positive contours. So not very optimal. Um, so we're going to clean this up. So you can take the time. I'm not going to do that, but they are actually even on top of this rather than using nice separate apertures to indicate the tear dropping that they wanted to accomplish. They're using the same one to also paint surface areas with. So what I'm going to quickly do because it's using all the tools that we have uh, learned so far. I'm going to select these contours here. And if they are more, then we worry about that later on. I'm going to just take these and separate these out and say, oh no, I want these in that aperture. So what that allows me to do, I can leave that teardropping alone like this because that, that's fine. But I want to have this, this copper area and this copper area and this negative area. I want to have all those. I want to optimize these out and turn these into one contour. And for that, we use the same function as we did for painting. Tools, editing, contours, contourize. And that's perfectly fine because we are indeed going over different polarities, which is expected. So the system warns us that, hey, your image could have changed, which it did in this particular case. And there we go. This is already a lot cleaner data than what we had before, because now if I need to pump up the copper values or the copper area over here, I can very easily do that by concentrating on one contour rather than having to deal with the three different ones uh, and, and a negative one on top of that. So that concludes video 113.